the evolution of society and of humanity is one thing, but what about the, the life expectancy of, of the average person? Uh, as you're young, when you're young and you're growing, you can't do a lot of things because you're not strong enough and you're, and you're a child and you're, uh, you're, you're developing your muscle uh, skills, but you're also developing how to use your visual system. And in our society, one of the big things is reading. We teach kids how to read very early. We start with the alphabet. And when you think about reading, especially as those of us in, in America where we only have one language here, it's pretty straightforward. You have to track your eyes left to right across the page. You have to learn the language. But the pattern of reading that you learn as a youngster, you believe is going to serve you throughout your whole life. But you learn a lot of other things uh, in terms of how you move your body, how you walk, how you get around. And when you go through them, you're, you know, you're, when you're fully grown, somewhere in your mid-teens, up into sort of uh, middle adulthood, uh, all those tasks you know, work pretty well for you. But as you start to reach, for most people in their 40s, they start to realize some of your uh, systems that you always depended on start to break down. You don't run as fast, you don't jump as high, many people don't hear as well, especially men don't hear as well uh, as you get on. So you have to start finding a new way to make adaptations, and some of these are pretty straightforward. Uh, the, another breakdown in the human system is that as we reach 40, the focusing mechanism of our eye starts to break down. And you no longer can focus on the distance and focus on near. Now, this is, this is a huge problem. Now, when it used to be the life expectancy of a human being was 40 years, it wasn't a problem because you died before you ever had to worry about that. But, but as we started to become more civilized and, and also in a society where reading was critical, you know, not being able to read uh, and seeing the distance not be able to read was, was just a disaster. So actually right here in America, one of the people we're going to talk about several times today is our good friend Ben Franklin who invented the bifocal. And at that time, that was a revolutionary adaptation, a pair of glasses that would correct you in the distance and a different prescription for near. Now, still, you realize that kids don't have this problem. Only people 40 or older wear bifocals, but there's now so many of us that are 40 and older that bifocals are a way of life. And so we've continued to evolve, and as, you, as those of you that know, bifocals always used to have that little round segment. Now then they went to the flat segment. Now almost all bifocals are invis invisible and engineered to give you vision in uh, all different directions. Bifocals are a low vision aid. We had a problem, and we found a new way to adapt. We developed the bifocal lens, and most people I see in this room that are wearing glasses, I would better wear in some type of bifocal, except some of these youngsters sitting in the back. But bifocals are an adaptation. We found, again, found a new way to do something. Now, as you move further down the road, a large number of people developed this problem called macular degeneration. And macular degeneration in various forms causes you to lose your central vision. Now, unlike diseases like glaucoma and retinitis pigmentosa that will ultimately blind you, macular degeneration is not a blinding disease. We, we consider it a nuisance disease. Because even in its worst case scenario, you only lose 10% of your vision, but you lose 10% out of the middle. And so for most people who uh, have learned how to read the traditional way, moving this, their maculas across the text they want to see, uh, it's a disaster because they, now they can no longer do what they wanted to do. Not only reading, they can't see to drive, the television is difficult, recognizing faces across the room is hard. So suddenly we're, we're have, we have a giant problem. And so I'm here to tell you that there are ways to, around this. We can find a new way. Uh, there are a number of adaptations, and the whole field of low vision is looking at various tools within the, the chest of optics and now electronics to be able to help you find a new way. So again, it's just another adaptation. Humans have been doing it since the beginning of time, and uh, there are ways to be able to adapt to this macular degeneration. Now, I want to talk a little bit now about what I call the jigsaw of macular degeneration. In my early career in the 80s, most people that presented for, for low vision had the wet form of macular degeneration where they had a giant blind spot in the middle of their vision. So if you think of an old-fashioned dartboard, the, like the hundred, you know, the, hundred, the central with the hundred and then the rings around that kind of a dartboard, if you had the traditional wet form of macular degeneration, you often lost the 100 ring. And so you had a central blind spot. And so it was fairly easy to magnify and to adjust. People with the wet form, it's straightforward magnification tends to help. Uh, a number of years ago, we developed a, uh, actually not that many, maybe five years ago, developed a new treatment for the wet form of macular degeneration, a miraculous new drug that if we catch macular degeneration early, we can inject a special drug into the eye 
and for many cases we can stop the progression of wet macular degeneration in its tracks. And for, for people who know they have macular degeneration uh, and they get that treatment, sometimes they have no idea about all this disability we talk about for other people that w had it before the treatment was available because uh, they don't really notice really hardly any uh, loss of vision if it's treated early. Now, what we're learning now that we're five years down the road, that although we can really treat the wet form of macular degeneration, the dry form is one that's now becoming our fi primary focus uh, of trying to figure out ways to help people with the dry. And ironically, people that develop the, the wet are a little younger, and once we treat them with this drug and we basically can stop the progression of the wet, they often go on to develop the dry. Very few people, it's cut, you know, I have the wet or the dry, most people actually have both. Uh, and it's, it's really difficult for someone who had the wet and feels that they had the drug to cure their macula, as they continue to get older and, and uh, you know, approach older age, the dry starts to become more debilitating. Now the dry form of macular degeneration is really like the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, it's very difficult, people with the dry often score reasonably well on the vision charts. And so the eye doctors, again, depending on wh who you go to, may minimize your disability because you see, they'll say to you, but you're 2025 or you're 2030. That's really considered good vision. Why are you, t why are you complaining so much? Uh, but what we've learned is that, that that's not the whole story. Unlike the wet form, when you have the dry, you often retain that central ring and your dartboard, so you have really good vision in the center, but then your 80 ring and your 60 ring and many times even your 40 ring are missing. So you have a giant area of blindness around an island in the middle that sees reasonably well. So uh, it's very misleading because you pass, you pass the, the vision test in the eye doctor's office, but yet you might be very disabled in trying to live your everyday life. So we've now learned that and unlike a, a dartboard, it's really more analogous to a jigsaw puzzle. If you take a look at a jigsaw puzzle, someone who's building a jigsaw puzzle, they have a couple of pieces assembled, but then there's all these missing areas. Now, if you were going to assemble a jigsaw puzzle and you, and you wanted to become really good at it, and there's contests for people to learn how to build jigsaw puzzles, there's, there's ways to learn how to do it. For most of us that are novices, we start and put the edges together, because putting the edges together is fairly simple. You can see the straight edge, you can put them together and line them up, and you build the edge, and you build the puzzle from the, inside, from the outside in. That's sort of the novice's way to do it. And as you start to build in, the picture starts to emerge, uh, and then once you have the picture emerging, then it moves faster. Actually, professional jug, uh, jigsaw assemblers don't really do it that way. They look at the picture that they're trying to build and they look at the puzzle pieces and they start to basically sort through the puzzle pieces and build the picture in the middle and then work towards the edge because it's actually much easier to build a puzzle once you get adept to it. But you have to learn a new way. You can't do the jigsaw puzzle approach uh, the same way you would do it as a novice and when you get better at it you, you learn that skill. When you have the dry form of macular degeneration you literally have your own jigsaw puzzle. Parts of your vision are missing parts of them are intact. When you look at somebody, you might notice that their right eye is very clear, but you can't see the mouth. Or their left ear is clear and you can't see the mouth. And we, most of the time we're drawn to the mouth because that's where, uh, you know, we, we, with normal sight, that's where you learn to read lips to compensate for the fact that your hearing might not be as good. But when you go to the, the lips, the lips disappear because they often fall into a dead spot, but yet you can see the ear. Well, that doesn't really help you. So you have to learn a new way. You have to learn how to basically move your eye around and assemble the jigsaw puzzle in your mind so that you can tell what you're seeing. And the same thing goes for reading. When you go to read, when you start to read a word, you may be able to see a couple of letters on the word or a couple of letters on the line, but you can't basically assemble it into a meaningful fashion. So when you go to read, you stumble and you really decide, gee, I really can't read anymore because uh, my macular generation prevents that. But there are techniques that we use in, in low vision to teach you how to do it a new way. The same way you can adapt to all these other problems we've been talking about, you can learn how to assemble the jigsaw puzzle. Our rehabilitation program that we developed for people with the wet form, we found that it doesn't work as well for the dry form because it's a, yet a different task. So teaching a macular patient with a central blind spot as we would have in the wet macular is different than teaching, teaching someone with the, with the dry macular. So we have a process that's different. Like the jigsaw assembler, uh, we start very simple. So our rehabilitation uh, course starts with, first of all, special glasses. By adjusting the focal length, we can find the ideal length 
to give you the most information to build your jigsaw puzzle. So we, we test you with certain magnification levels to find out the ideal uh, focal distance for your eye. And then once we know that focal distance, we give you some exercises starting with single letters. We know that you can read a letter. So we start reading letters left to right and assembling the way your brain and your eye coordinate to be able to read letters in a row going left to right. And when you can do letters, then we move you to two-letter words and then three-letter words. So we rebuild the ability for your eye to assemble the jigsaw puzzle of writing and make it into a meaningful task. And so we can teach people with macula how, how to read. We've also learned that another key element of macular degeneration is lighting. Somebody with dry macular degeneration in dim light, they're practically blind. They really don't have much vision at all. But all you need to do is turn the lights up and the vision improves dramatically. I've seen people who tell me they can't read the newspaper, they can't read the headlines in the newspaper, and then we turn the light up and they find they can read the text. Uh, so lighting is a critical element and part of our low vision workup is to find the ideal lighting, the ideal focal length, and then, and then basically teach you a new way to be able to read. Now, I'm not here to say that this is simple. Uh, it's very frustrating because people want to go back, as soon as they start to read, they love to go back to the pattern that they learned and they did for many years and it's very counterproductive. So in the beginning it's a frustration and it gets jumbled up, but people that have persevered with us through the program and learned how to, a new way of how to read often find that not only can they read better, but other everyday tasks are better because they learn how to basically use their limited vision in a new way and so that they get uh, a useful information.